It can rightly be said that 2023 was the beginning of the end of Franca Frique, meaning the end of France's influence in Africa. Starting with Mali and spreading to Burkina Faso and Niger, France's influence in Francophone Africa is gradually dying. Its military presence and diplomatic relations in the Sahel, where it once had a stronghold, have deteriorated. All thanks to the wave of leaders brought by the wave of coups. Now it's 2024, and African geopolitics is changing again. But this time, it's the world's superpower. The United States' relations with African countries that is in the spotlight. In mid-March, Niger shocked the West and the world at large by ending the Status of Forces Agreement signed in 2012, which allowed the United States military forces to be in the country and carry out its operations. It was the first time an African country chose to make that kind of decision. Ending the defense agreement with the U.S. meant that the presence of the 1,100 forces settled in the base in Niamey was illegal. According to the military government of Niger, they made this decision following a meeting held between officials of the U.S. military, including the commander of the United States Africa Command, General Michael Langley, and the Prime Minister of Niger. Recall that after the coup which removed former President Bazoum from power in July 2023, the U.S. troops stationed in the Agadez base in Niamey became inactive. So the purpose of the meeting between officials of the U.S. military and the Prime Minister of Niger was to plot the way forward concerning the security relationship between the two countries. However, the meeting ended badly with the United States exhibiting its usual superior and condescending attitude towards Niger and demanding that Niger had to cut off diplomatic relations with Russia and Iran going forward. But the authorities in Niger refused to be intimidated or give in to the demands of the United States. Instead, they stated that Niger is a sovereign country, which means that it has every right to choose whoever it wants to partner with. So if the U.S. military is interested in remaining in the country, then it has to conform to that fact. Initially, when Niger announced that it had ended the Status of Forces Agreement with the U.S., some people, including officials from the United States military, thought that there was still a chance for the U.S. to remain in the country because even though Niger ended the agreement, the authorities did not clearly state that the U.S. military should leave the country. So, given this loophole, the U.S. decided to exploit this fact by having a series of conversations with the authorities in Niger in an attempt to create a new military agreement that would allow it to remain in the country. At the time, officials from the United States highlighted that it was very hard for the U.S. to walk away from Niger because of the extensive base of operation it had established and the millions of dollars invested in the base. Hence the need for a revised agreement that would aim at finding a formula that addresses the respective interests and concerns between both countries. Now, while the U.S. was busy looking for ways to remain in Niger, Hundreds of protesters took to the streets in the capital of Niger to demand the departure of United States troops. Matching arm in arm through the capital, the crowd waved Nigerian flags in a demonstration that recalled anti-French protests that spurred the withdrawal of France's forces from Niger last year. We're here to say no to the American base. We don't want Americans on our soil, one protester said. The people could also be heard chanting, down with American imperialism, and the people's liberation is on the march. However, unfortunately for the United States, none of those conversations yielded any results. But what did they expect? The major cause of disagreement between both countries is the fact that Niger is partnering with Russia, and it has no intention of ending its diplomatic relationship with Russia just because the United States commanded it. To send this message across to the United States, Niger received soldiers from the Russian army a week after it announced that it had ended its defense agreement with the U.S., the United States on its part is not ready to cooperate with Russia in Niger. So, on Saturday 20th of April, 2024, officials from the United States military officially announced that the U.S. will begin plans to withdraw its troops from Niger. Speaking to the Associated Press, the U.S. State Department made it known that the Prime Minister of Niger, Ali Lamine Zain, and U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell agreed on Friday that the two nations would begin to plan the withdrawal of American troops. Currently, there is no timeline for when the withdrawal will begin, but it was reported that in the coming weeks, conversation will be held between both countries on when the withdrawal would take place. 
According to a senior U.S. State Department official who spoke on condition of anonymity, the military junta of Niger made it clear that he does not want any foreign forces in the country, including the U.S., and that the security partnership was ending for the time being. While some may say that the withdrawal of U.S. troops from the country would further increase the insecurity in the country, the fact is the withdrawal of the U.S. troops is fantastic news for Niger because the presence of the U.S. forces has not done anything to solve the problem of insecurity. So they may as well leave. Now, while this is fantastic news for Niger, it is a big blow and a setback to the United States military presence in Africa. However, that is not the only blow the United States is set to receive. While plans are being made for it to withdraw from Niger, another country in the Sahel has decided to follow in the footsteps of Niger, threatening to cut off the defense agreement with the United States. This country is none other than Chad, the last stronghold in the Sahel that still houses French forces. According to four sources from the United States, the government of Chad recently sent a letter to the U.S. defense attaché threatening to cancel the Status of Forces Agreement, or SOFA, which determines the rules and conditions under which U.S. military personnel can operate in the country. Although the letter did not directly order the U.S. military to leave Chad, it ordered the United States to halt activities at an air base near the capital in Jemena. According to Chad's Minister of Armed Forces, Air Force Chief of Staff Idris Amini Ahmed, the decision to send the letter was necessary because the U.S. military has failed to provide documents justifying their presence there. The letter also specifically mentions the U.S. Special Operations Task Force, SOTF, at the base, an important hub for U.S. Special Operations Forces in the region. But the task force is not the only contingent of U.S. military personnel at the base, as all U.S. service members in Chad are located in Ninjamena. However, according to one source, the letter was not sent through official diplomatic channels, which is the standard way to handle these issues. Instead, the letter was from the Chief of Air Staff of Chad, Idris Amine, an unusual way to transfer such a significant message. As a result, experts suggest that the letter could be a negotiation tactic by the government of Chad to get a new agreement that better favors their interests. Unlike Niger, which has about 1,100 troops, the U.S. military troops in Niger are fewer than 100. Although the United States military has not said anything on the subject, a spokesperson for the U.S. State Department stated that the U.S. is in ongoing conversations with Chadian officials about the future of our security partnership. This signifies that the relationship between both countries is not smooth. Regardless of the reason why Chad is threatening to end the defense agreement with the United States, the fact is just like France, the United States is beginning to lose its influence in Africa. Just like how France has started in Mali and spread across the Sahel, for the United States, it has started in Niger and is beginning to spread. The decision made by Niger to end defense relations with the United States is what gave the Chadian government the boldness to do likewise, and there is a chance that other African countries that secretly resent the presence of the U.S. military in their country may do the same. Even if the U.S. doesn't withdraw from Chad, like it would in Niger, there is no doubt that the agreement signed between both countries would have to be reviewed, and a new one, which benefits both countries, is signed. The fact is, most of the agreements signed between African countries and the West, whether it's military or economic, usually favors the West more than African countries. Take Niger, for example. According to the agreement, Niger was forced to pay bills related to taxes on the U.S. military. Niger was ignorant of the activities conducted by the U.S. military in the country, and the U.S. military was under no obligation to respond to any request for help against militants. This meant that if Niger called for help in its fight against the terrorists, the U.S. had every right to refuse to help. This agreement obviously doesn't benefit Niger in any way. Hence, it's a good thing that the U.S. is withdrawing from the country. Indeed, Niger is pursuing its independence, and it's important that other African countries should follow in its footsteps. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.